Hi, I'm Monica, and this is Facewear TV. With my 30 years of experience as a makeup artist and esthetician, I share my knowledge, tips, and tricks, helping anyone who wants healthier skin, a more youthful appearance, without having to rely on injectables. So hit subscribe, and let's get started. Hi, I'm Monica. This is Facewear TV. I'm an esthetician and a makeup artist. I've been in the industry for 30 years. So I have been around the block. I've done a little bit of everything and I study a lot, I research a lot, and I use all the things I'm gonna share with you, I use myself. So I am 55, I don't use Botox, I don't get injectables, I'm not saying that it's wrong. I'm not judging you. If that's what you do, that's fine, you do you. So I'm here to show you things you can do to help without using injectables. I do skincare and makeup. I have clients coming to me. I have a lot of clients that come in that are on the verge of getting an injectable. They've just had it with their skin. They feel like they look dull, lifeless, and they feel like they've aged so much so quickly. And they're on the verge. They're on their way to either come to me to see what we can do or go get an injection. And they're so fearful of taking that route of getting injections. So they feel like it's just one of those things that are just gonna start domino effect where you're gonna start with one thing and it's gonna turn into another thing. And then you're gonna feel more comfortable getting injectables that you're gonna end up going overboard or kind of get convinced into doing a lot of things, which is a fear. People fear that once they go, that the person that's doing the injectables will kind of gear you into like a domino effect of now you need to get this. Oh, if you want this to work, you need to get that. Oh, if you want this, you have to get that. So they're very fearful of that. And I guess the way the celebrities look right now, some of them look unrecognizable and they, they're they so fearful of that. And they don't want to fall into that pit of, now what do I do? Now I change the way I look. How do I get back to the way I was? So that's the fear that people have. And I'm gonna tell you some of the things, there's always a number one thing, so I can't keep saying that but this is a very popular thing that people complain about with their skin. Besides the fact of not wanting to get injectables, that's why they come to me because they wanna know what they can do to not rely on that. The things that people say when they come to me are very similar. I'm gonna start with a more basic thing. One of the things they complain about is their poor, their, the condition of their skin, the health of their skin, which can sometimes be easier to target and sometimes may require a little bit more. It depends on the severity, I guess you can say, the severity of what, or, or just the condition their skin is in. It has a very big connection to the aging of your skin. And what I mean by that is, let's say you have a lot of lines around your eyes. The um, You have a lot of lines over here. You have lots of lines, lots of heaviness underneath your eyes, lots of puffiness, and you feel like that's dragging you down. So maybe that's your number one concern is around your eyes. I like to tell them my solution or one of my things that I tell them that we need to discuss is do you have a lot of dead skin buildup? If you have a lot of dead skin buildup, it does a lot of things that will cause your skin to look older. Let's say you um, the lines in your hands, let's say these lines in your knuckles and everything. If you dip your hand into flour and you pull it out, you're going to notice these lines look deeper. So the reason why there's a lot of powder and, and what the flour on top, laying on top, so now it's making the lines look deeper. So that's kind of the same thing. That's what happens when you wear makeup and you don't press it in correctly. That's another another video. So the condition of your skin, if you have a lot of dead skin buildup, that dead skin is laying on top. So it's, cre it's making the lines look deeper. One of the things I like to tell them is before you go looking into getting Botox or some other injectable, let's take care of the things that we can, and then you can decide what you might need additional help with. I think it's a much better way. It's just like if you are told you need surgery for your knee or something. Maybe there's some physical therapy, some things you can do at home, some exercises, icing, whatever. You can do that before getting surgery. So it's the same, it's not exactly the same thing, but it's the same kind of thought process where let's take care of the things that we can before going into a more serious sort of scenario, which injectables are, you're injecting neurotoxins into your body. So that to me seems a little more serious, a little more comparable to getting a surgery. I tell them, let's take care of the things that we can. 
One of the things that cause more, or the lines to look deeper, to look more um, aggressive, I guess, more apparent, is the dead skin buildup. So now we're going back to dead skin buildup is one of the culprits to a lot of issues. But the main thing is lines, lines on the face, especially around the eyes. When you have too much dead skin buildup, it is absolutely making those lines look worse. I can do the hydrofacial, I tell them, let's do the hydrofacial. That removes a lot of the dead skin. If you're not here or you can't afford to get a hydrofacial, there are things you can do at home. Uh, this one is very inexpensive, the oatmeal bamboo exfoliant. This is very easy to do. All you do is you put, it's a powder exfoliant. It's not a detergent based exfoliant, which is kind of important. That's where you have to worry about ingredients a lot. If this is a powder, it's a powder. So it has um, oatmeal, it has, which is very soothing. It has a zuki bean in it, which helps to eat away only dead skin cells. It, it has a lot of ingredients that help to remove slough off the dead skin without being aggressive. So it's very gentle. It's very gentle. All you do, make it like a paste. So you put the powder in your hand, add a little bit of water. You can even add a little bit of my anise cleanser, whatever you want. You just something to keep it nice and give it a sloughing feeling. So you're gonna make it like a paste and you're just gonna rub around on moist skin. So you're gonna wet your face, rub around like that. And you can go a little bit around the eyes. You're not pressing hard and you're never using a washcloth. You're just using your fingers. So you can rub just a little bit more. You don't need to rub a lot and then rinse and put your sea serum, your healing oil, that's gonna get you started for the day. But that could be one thing you can do to help smooth out some fine lines. The other thing you can do, which is one of my favorites, is the Hevatox. So the Hevatox pads, which is good for when you are getting older. The oatmeal bamboo is great to use and it's great if you're on a budget. And I do think it's great, especially if you have a lot of dead skin built up and you're younger and you're suffering from clogged pores and some acne, just an unhealthy skin environment. So it's gentle for everyone. The Hevatox pads is also good for everyone, but I wouldn't recommend it maybe for someone who's like 16 or 15 or just younger. It's not gonna be the right type of exfoliant for them. But if you're older, you know, your 20s, 30s, whatever age and you're trying to alleviate some of the lines, you don't want them to happen. Hevatox pads is absolutely great. So you wanna cleanse your skin, remove your eye makeup. It is not an eye makeup remover, it's not a makeup remover. Same thing with this exfoliant. You do not remove makeup with it. You're wasting your money if you do and it's not really gonna work the right way. You're just gonna irritate your skin if you're trying to remove makeup with that because you would have to rub way too much. So the Hevatox pads too. You wanna make sure it's on cleansed skin and I always tell everybody cut them in half. It's a full circle the way it comes and all you do is cut them in half and this way you can just wipe around. You get more out of your money. I'm very frugal. I like to save everybody money. So you, you cut them in half Instead of 55 pads, now you have 110. In the beginning, I think you should definitely do it twice a day. And as you start using it more, you can cut down to maybe once a day or you figure it out. But you just wipe around, go all over, and it will help get rid of some of that dead skin without drying out your skin. It's adding nutrients to it right after you wipe it. It's adding nutrients already. Like the wipe has both ingredients in it. So this is very beneficial. After you're done, you have to put on the sea serum and the healing oil. So this will help a lot with some of the fine lines on your face to prevent sagging and drooping and just wrinkles. Because if you have that dead skin buildup, it's also causing your pores to be clogged and your skin to be really just weighed down. It causes dullness and it causes your skin to just look droop. It just causes your skin to look droopy. It's where your skin starts drooping down like this. So it is one of the causes by having a lot of dead skin buildup. Why do I always have clogged pores? I tell them it's because you have dead skin buildup. It's not because you have excessive oil production. It's the dead skin buildup. So this is the other culprit of having droopy skin caused by dead skin buildup. So if you have the dead skin buildup and you have pores on your nose, so when you remove the dead skin, when I do a hydrofacial or you use one of the, the Hevatox or the oatmeal scrub, you're removing a lot of the dead skin. Your pores are there to help your skin breathe 
and they're there to help keep your skin um, with the proper moisture on it. Your, your body is like a, a computer. It knows exactly what it needs all the time. So if your skin is a little dry, it's gonna produce oil. That's a natural occurrence that needs to happen. And it needs oxygen. It needs oxygen to breathe. It's the largest organ of your body. So it needs to breathe to be able to be healthy and function. Now your skin is clogged. There's a lot of dead skin built up. It's clogged, the pores are clogged. Now the dead skin that's clogging it is falling into the pore. So the pore actually gets larger because it can't breathe. It gets larger because it's clogged and it can't breathe. So the, the dead skin that's falling into it in the first place. So it's the dead skin that's causing it to get larger because the dead skin falls into the pore, into the opening, and now it's clogged and it can't breathe. So the pore gets bigger to allow it to get oxygen in it. But now it's clogged and the oil can't come out. So now the oil is getting trapped inside underneath that dead skin and it can't get out. So now your pore is trying to get bigger, it's trying to, to get the oil out to do its job and it can't. So now you have that struggle going on and most likely what you're doing at home or what you're doing is causing it to be even worse. You think, oh, you have dead skin built up, I'm gonna get a really heavy moisturizer. Now you get that heavy moisturizer, you put it on, it's clogging your skin even more. Your skin doesn't even know how to absorb it normally. It can't absorb it now because there's a lot of dead skin blocking the pores. The next thing people do is, oh, I have blackheads. I'm gonna need to do something to get rid of these blackheads. So they use an astringent, they use something that's gonna dry their skin out to get rid of the oil. So now you've reversed it again and now your skin is like, now I'm really dry and more dead skin is building up and I need to produce more oil because now I feel like I'm lacking moisture completely and now something just affected it to create more dryness. So your skin is like, I have to do my job. I'm gonna produce twice as much oil now because I I'm clearly not doing enough work. So it produces more oil. So now more oil is getting trapped inside. It can't get out, your pores are getting bigger. So that's why when you come to get a facial, a hydrofacial, or you're using, maybe you're only using an exfoliant maybe once a week or it's very infrequently, that's the problem. You need to be committed to addressing the issue and you have to make sure you're using the right exfoliant. If you want, you can comment below. Let me know what exfoliant you're using. I can tell you if I think it's maybe too harsh or maybe not enough or tell me what your whole process is, I'll help you out. I'll do my best. I'll do my best to help you. But you can also buy my products. There's a link below where you can get, or facewear.net, you can get my exfoliant, my scrub, or you can get the Hevatox. That is, in a, large nuts, in a large nutshell, what is going on with your skin. So this is the issue that most people have and they don't know why it keeps happening. It keeps happening either because you're not taking care of it. Getting a facial every now and then is really good. Hydrofacial is very effective. Hydrofacial is a good place to really jumpstart your skincare routine in case you've been slacking off and you're just like, oh, I don't know what's going on. Going to someone who's good, make sure you get referrals because anybody can do a hydrofacial. And a lot of times they teach you according to the book. I took it further and developed a way that I can do the hydrofacial that makes sense to me, that where I can tweak it a little bit and change it for every client. So I don't change that much, it's just the process. So. It's too much to get in. It's too much to get into it because you're not an esthetician. But if you go to somebody who has a good following, someone has good referrals, go get a hydrofacial. Very good. It might be a little expensive, but it's worth it. It really is. When you're done, you feel refreshed. You feel like your skin is finally breathing. I actually do oxygen treatments after the hydrofacial. So I do an oxygen spray, 95% pure oxygen. So your skin, imagine if you weren't able to breathe for so long and now you get 95% pure oxygen you're so happy. So now you have that that um, that oxygen getting infused into your skin, which now your skin is so happy. It's relieving it a little bit, but it's not lasting that long. Your skin produces a lot more dead skin within that 30 days. That's why they say to come get a facial every month. But anyway, let's get back to the big issues that people complain about. So having large pores and clogged pores always having fine lines, and then they have the droopiness. The droopiness which um, leads them to, they don't even realize where the droopiness is starting. So when they tell me what's going on with their face, what they don't like about it, I have a mirror with them so they can see and they can explain to me. A lot of times it's the number 11s, 
which for me is very easy to address unless, you know, we can soften them a lot. But then if you're constantly scowling, maybe you need glasses or you need better sunglasses, it causes a lot of people to do that and they'll come right back. But we can soften them a lot. I'll show you that in another episode. The other thing that people complain about is their face just looking older. It looks drawn down, it looks saggy and they don't know what it is. They feel like their jowls are drooping down. I tell them to look in the mirror and I say, okay, go like this, lift over here. Where do you see it lifting? And they say here, their jowls. Then I tell them to lift over here. And then they realize, so you can do the same thing when you look in a mirror, it's lifting over here. Now lift all the way on the side. That lifts all down here. So if you lift like this all the way across your face, you can see, especially right here, this area right here, lifts, look where it lifts, the number 11s. I'm not the number 11s are the nasal labial fold. So when you lift over here, that muscle lifts that whole area. So there's a lot of things you can do before you go into doing injectables, because I'm not even sure how injectables work some of the times, because I feel like if you get, if you get cheek fillers, it may weigh down the rest of your face. So you need to lift your cheeks first. The first thing you need to do is create a healthy skin environment. Number one thing, make sure your pores are regulated, make sure they're not large and they need more oxygen. Make sure the dead skin, make sure you're exfoliating, make sure you have the correct exfoliant, make sure you have the correct amount of moisture to put back, like my C serum and the healing oil will absolutely give you the correct amount of moisture without overdoing it. If you have a really heavy moisturizer, I have my avocado basil too, which is great, especially if you're younger and you're just afraid to use oils, avocado basil moisturizer is great. But I think if you reach a certain age, C serum for everybody, but C serum and healing oil, which could also be for everybody, is the best way to go. Those products are essential. Get your skin in good health. Then we can start talking about how to target those issues of sagging and even more about the lines around the, around the eyes or anywhere on the face. Then we can target each thing and have you go on that route to start healing that or fixing that. So I think it's very important. Make sure we fix the skin issues. Make sure you have a healthy skin. Then you can move to the next issue. I know this is probably a very boring video. It's just me talking. I don't have a lot of things to show you, but it's important you know that these are the things that will help your skin. It's not an overnight, you know, boom, you're done. You need to take things in steps. We need to make sure we go to step one, which is having healthy skin. And healthy skin is about using the products, doing different things and not doing certain things. So there's some things you need to take away, some things you need to add. Eating healthy, uh, making sure you're not having as much sugars, make sure you lessen the amount of sugars that you have. I'm gonna do some nutritional tips too within my video, just to show you what I do because I can't have a lot of sugars. I can't, my body is my body is sensitive to everything. I mean, everything. I don't have a lot of eyebrows, just in case you know, I don't, in case you don't know, I mean, everybody can see. My eyebrows are so light, they're so, I don't have a lot. That's just how I am. Like even when I was little, I had the unibrow, but I had very thin brows. And I'm half Ecuadorian, so I'm Spanish. And my friend who also is Spanish, she's ha she's Ecuadorian too. Um, we both have like the same brows. So it seems like if you're Spanish, you can have like over amount, you know, over production of brows, or you can be like me and her where we have very little. And she actually does, which I'll talk about her soon because she is a, a doctor. She's a doctor at an ER over in Westchester. Very good doctor, um, does some crazy stuff in the ER and she does injectables. She injects, she does Botox, she does different things to help with aging. So we are alike but different in the same thing because we can talk about everything. And she knows, well, first of all, she knows I will never come to her for anything. And she also told me she she would never administer them to me because I have so many allergies. I'm so sensitive to everything. So she also does microblading, which I was so excited. I wanted to go to her for microblading, of course, I'm so sensitive to the numbing cream that I had to like take two days off after because it affected me so much. Like even driving home, like I'm in New York, but she's in Westchester, I have to cross over a bridge to get home. I would drive home and I'd be like, oh my God, I can't even keep my eyes open because the numbing cream affected me so much. 
So I, I'm definitely not gonna get injections. She's not gonna, if she's not gonna do it, I wouldn't go to anybody. She's very good, she's very good. She only does a little bit. She knows the muscles so good. She does Botox where she can like fix somebody's nose, like the hook in their nose, it's crazy. But anyway, that's why I have thin eyebrows because that's just how I am. Yes, maybe when I was younger I tweezed, but I had thin eyebrows back then too. I fill them in, I get lazy, I work in them, I work, so I have to be ready for my clients that are coming in and I can't sit there every day. I don't wear a lot of makeup every day either because I, I can't, I have to be ready for work. And then afterwards, sometimes I'll go exercise, work out, then I'll do some videos, I'll do some other work that I need to do. So doing my eyebrows, sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. I'm not one of those people that I have to be, you know, absolutely perfectly made up all the time. I can't be like that. I don't have the patience and I don't have that type of personality to do that. I can't, because sometimes it's just like, whatever. Anyway, back on track. Make sure you take care of your skin. I will teach you the way to take care of your skin so you can have healthy skin. Make sure we get you on the right home care. If you want some advice when you go get a facial if, to get the right one, um, lasers are another issue. We can talk about too on another, um, another episode, but doing things at home, the tools that I have, I have other videos to tell you about that, but making sure you take care of your skin because we're gonna go into how to lift your cheeks, lifting your cheeks, lifting this whole area, which will help lift your skin up is an important part of it, but making sure that your skin is not weighed down because of the excessive skin. Make sure it's not weighed down from the excessive clogged areas and you can be clogged all over. I had one client where all over here was so clogged because she thought she's getting older, she feels saggy, droopy, wrinkles. So she went out and bought one of the most expensive, um, one of the most expensive moisturizers. It was very thick and she decided to use that. So she, when she came to me finally, she was like, and this is a client that I've had for 30 years. Sometimes clients go away, they come back, things happen. I moved, I was all over the place. So she's starting to come back to me. Um, and she was telling me what she's using at home and she always tries to be more natural. She always stuck with what I taught her to make sure she does things more natural. So she thought this was a great product and a lot of people would think so too. I looked in the ingredient list and I said, nope, this is not for you. It was just full of coconut oil and things that would clog her pores. Coconut oil can be good for some people and really bad for other people. It could cause more issues, more dullness, more weighing down. And that's what was happening to her. When we do the hydrofacial, I'm like, yes, there is stuff stuck inside that I can't get out. You have to come back a couple of times to really get it out. I'm not overly aggressive, but you can see that there's things that you can do that you think you're doing the right thing and it's making it worse. So stick with me, find out what you're doing that could be right and could be wrong. And I'm not gonna tell you if something is good for you and it's not one of my products, I am more than happy to say, yes, continue using it. So let me know, comment below, let me know what you're doing, what you're not doing, if you need more tips, or you can look below, you can see where you can buy all my stuff to use at home. And make sure you go into the tools that you can use at home because that's also very important to make a change in your skin. That's very, it's a much easier way to do at home where you don't have to go out and get a facial all the time. You don't have to spend for a facial all the time. You can do this stuff at home and do these things before you make a decision to go get injectables. And again, you do you. If you want to go run out and get injections for everything, that's fine. And even if you do do injections and you want better skin, you can follow also. I will see you on the next episode. Make sure you like, make sure you subscribe, make sure you comment below, ask me anything, and I will gladly answer and hopefully help you. So I hope this helped you a lot and I'll see you at the next episode. Bye.